Okay, in this problem, we're going to do a derivative question involving the product rule and analyzing the graph to get the answer. Suppose that h of x is equal to the product of f of x times g of x, and that we're asked to find h prime of 3. Well, since h is defined as a product, we're going to need to use the product rule. So I'm going to start by writing this out. The derivative of h is going to be found by using the product rule, which is the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Now the question asks, asks us to specifically find the derivative of h at the x value 3. So we're going to replace every x value with 3. So this becomes f of 3 times g prime of 3 plus g of 3 times f prime of 3. And now we're at the point where we have to actually interact with the graph and try to figure out what some of these values are. I'm going to start by just making four blanks to represent the four answers that I need to find. Okay, so the first thing I need to find is f of 3. Now there are two graphs. One is for the f function in red and the other is for the g function in blue. So f of 3 means go to the f graph and find x equals 3. Now when I find x equals 3, we get the y value of 15. So f of 3 is 15. So the first blank gets a 15. Now the, the next easiest thing to find would be, I think, g of 3. So what that means is go to the g function or the blue graph and find 3 there. g of 3, as you might guess, is 8. So far very easy. Now let's go to this guy here g prime of 3. This is the derivative or the slope of the tangent line of the g graph when x is equal to 3. So if I go to x equals 3 and I ask myself what is the slope of the tangent line at that point, well since this is a line segment or a straight line, if I were to draw a tangent line it would just be basically what this segment is. The slope would be whatever this the slope of this segment is. So we could figure out the slope and know what the derivative is. So we have 8 minus 6 on the, the, for the change in y, and then we have 3 minus 9 for the change in x. Rem remembering that slope is the change in y over the change in x. So we're going to get 2 over negative 6, which reduces to negative 1 third. So the slope of the tangent line when x equals 3 on the g graph is negative one third. So that's going to go right here. Now if that gave you some trouble, we get a second chance. Not always in life do you get a second chance, but now we do. So I'm focusing my attention now at the derivative of the f function at the x value 3. So I go to the f function in red, I find the x value 3, and what this question is really asking is, what is the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3. So it's really just going to be whatever the slope of this segment is. So again I'm going to do the change in y over the change in x which will be 18 minus 15 over uh, 7 minus 3. So that's going to get me 3 over 4. So I'm going to write that right here. Okay. So I'm just going to clean this up now. h prime of 3 is going to be the product of 15 and negative 1 third, which is negative 5, and the product of 8 and 3 quarters, which is 24 fourths or 6, and then that sum, of course, is just going to be 1. So h prime of 3 is equal to 1.
In the next problem, we're going to use the quotient rule to answer uh, derivative questions using the same graph that we did for the product rule. And I've left some of the answers up there because I think it's going to make our work a little bit easier for the second problem. Okay, so now h of x is defined to be a quotient. So we're going to need to use the quotient rule. So to find the derivative of a, of a quotient, we're going to say the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. Now, they're asking us to find the derivative specifically at 3. So h prime of 3, and this is just going to require substituting uh, for every x a 3, g of 3 times f prime of 3 minus f of 3 times g prime of 3 all over g of 3 squared. All right, now it's just going to be plugging the actual values in and, and interacting with the graph to get those answers. So g of 3 means go to the blue graph, find 3, and see what it gets sent to. And the answer is 8. f prime of 3 means the slope of the tangent line when x equals 3 on the red graph. So if I find x equals 3 on the red graph and I say, well, what's the slope of the tangent line? Well, we've already figured that out, and it's 3 fourths. Minus. Now, the next component is going to be f of 3. So f means the red function. Find x equals 3. y equals 15. So that's going to be 15. And then g prime of 3 means the slope of the tangent line uh, when x equals 3 to the blue graph. And that's going to be negative 1 third. And all of this goes over g of 3 squared. And g of 3 is 8. So that's going to be 8 squared. So we're just going to clean this up and we'll be done. 8 times 3 fourths is 24 fourths, or 6. The product of two negatives is a positive, and 1 third of 15 is 5. And then 8 squared is 64. So we're going to get a final answer of 11 over 64. In our third example, we're going to need to use the chain rule to figure out the derivative. Uh, h of x is defined to be g of f of x. This one perhaps is the most tricky. Um, when you're finding the derivative using the chain rule, what you need to do is start by taking the derivative of the outer function. The outer function in this case is g. So it's going to be the derivative of g. But then you've got to multiply it by the derivative of the inner function, which is f. So let's just let that sink in for one second. And now we're going to rewrite it uh, specifically at h prime of 3. So we're going to replace every occurrence of x with 3. g prime of f of 3 times f prime of 3 and now we're going to interact with the graph and see what kind of values we can come up with g prime of f of 3 so let's look f of 3 means go to the red graph find when x is 3 and we get 15 cool so that's done now f prime of 3 means the slope of the tangent line when x is 3 on the red graph and that's going to be uh, 3 fourths. We've already figured that out. So I think I'm just going to offset this with another grouping symbol and then we're going to have times 3 fourths here. 
Okay. Now we got to do one more thing. We have to do one more thing. Um, the derivative or the slope of the tangent line of the g graph, the blue graph, at 15. So if I find x equals 15 on the g graph and I think, okay, what's the slope of the tangent line? which would be basically this blue line that I'm making, this darker blue line, I have to find the slope of this segment. So it's going to be 10 minus 6 over 15 minus 9, which is going to be 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. So the slope of the tangent line of the blue line at 15 is going to be 2 thirds. And we're going to multiply that by 3 fourths. That gives us a product of 6 twelfths, which reduces to 1 half. Okay? So I think for this, the, perhaps the trickiest part was just coming up with, with this second step right here. So maybe I'll just make one up right now. Let's say, let's say s of x is equal to j of m of x. So here would be another case where we have to use the chain rule because we have a, a composition of functions. So the derivative is going to be the derivative of the outer function, which would be j prime of m of x times the derivative of the inner function, which is going to be m prime of x. So if you get this concept, then you should be good with the chain rule, because it's the derivative of the outer function first, and then you're going to multiply that by the derivative of the inner function.